Hello everyone, my name is Marion with DTM Real Talk Channel. It's the channel that you can tune into, have the ability to listen to the thoughts of others about topics all over the world that touch every one of our lives. Everybody, everybody goes through basically the same thing. There is nothing new under the sun. So if you're going through, someone else has already been there. Maybe you can find hope. Maybe it's a pathway that can set you on the right road just by tuning in. So DTM, real talk, just keeping it real. And if you like it, like us at the bottom, subscribe, and let us know just how we helped you. Just keeping it real, nothing but love. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. We are back. Welcome back to DTM Real Talk. And I have my pumpkin baby back again. We did not finish our conversation. Someone asked the question, how did we meet? So we decided to come back and uh, tell y'all. Do you, do you remember how we met? I do. I do. I do. Do you really? Do you really? No, seriously, I do. I do. Okay, let's, let's, let's hear your version of it. Let's see okay. how this goes. See, I want you my version. I remember, girl. I had to speak at this church and it was a retreat. And uh, yeah, it was a retreat and I was going there to speak and we were on the bus. They loaded all the ladies up on the bus <laughs> and we were on our way, I think to Tyler, Texas. Yes, that's where it was. And going to Pine Cove. We was going to Pine Cove, that's right. <laughs> and she was, I was on this side of the bus. She was on that side of the bus sitting with another young lady. And if I'm lying, I am flying. <laughs> Y'all don't see me flying, right? No. That girl talked from the time we pull off the Dallas, Texas, all the, all the way to Pine Cove. You so you know what's funny? Bernadette. Yes. Wow. So the funny thing is, you know, we were very new to the church at the time. Yeah. And it had been a rough year. And I just, I knew I wanted to go, I, like, they said women's retreat. I didn't know what they meant when they said women's retreat. I didn't know they meant they was going to take us to the woods. I didn't know that. So I was excited. My husband signed me up. I get there. I didn't know where we're going. I just got on the bus and I met Bernadette. Exactly. I didn't really know her. And we bonded like we had known each other for years. And we did. We talked the entire They time. talked the entire time. And I said, oh my God. She spoke to me. She's like, hi. I said, hi. And that was all. <laughs> she was and talking that to Bernadette for an hour and a half. <laughs> And she ended up being my roommate. And she ended up being yeah, my roommate. That was, here. That was really and you were you were not that far. And then you spoke at the at the conference. Yeah, and I went we there just to kind of speak. bonded. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so anyway, on the way back, we we I think they rode on the way back too. And we kind of connected. I don't know at what point, but we exchanged numbers. Mm -hmm. And she asked how we met. So I'm we about to tell you how we met. We exchanged okay. numbers and uh I think I had just gotten a job. Now y'all gotta remember, I have been self-employed for over 22 yeah. years. So at that time, it was like over, over 16, 17 years. <laughs> and, uh, we talk about progress again, <laughs> but the yes. Lord used Hurricane Katrina that in a good me. way, but to <laughs> humble somebody like me. And I'm just keeping it real and telling y'all the truth with a F. Yeah. <laughs> now mind you, I'm in the financial industry. So I could sit down across from the table and talk to an individual about preparing, you know, for the end, the inevitable, and making sure they 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 get everything they need for their to not leave a burden on their family, right? Mm -hmm. And also leave a little change on the side. You know, that's my that's what I do. Yes. <laughs> and by the time I'm finished in an hour, I done made a thousand dollars or so, eight to eight, eight hundred, a thousand. Yes. So you know, and they feed me on top of that. So that's what I have been doing. <laughs> For 20 something years and Hurricane Katrina comes, we talk about progress. And God decided to humble his child. Oh. I, I had just opened my insurance agency in New Orleans. And when Katrina hit, I lost it all and everything else to go along with it. I ended up in Dallas, which is at the church where I met you. And I started looking for a job, actually ended up in Tyler from Tyler to, to Dallas. I started looking for a job. I said, God, I don't want to go work for nobody. Oh my God, I don't want to build another man's dreams. But the Lord said I did need to help somebody build their dream for this season. Progress. So I went to a temporary service. We're talking about progress. 
And uh, now, mind you, I haven't completed my education, as the people say. <laughs> I have gone to four colleges. I'm just keeping it real. Have excelled every time at every one of them that I've gone to and didn't graduate to any of them. Isn't that terrible? But it's all good. <laughs> it was for a purpose. It was for a purpose. <laughs> it was for a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I go to the temporary service and they send me to this little company that was started by... Um, I won't call the name, the guy, uh, young fellow, he's about 35, <laughs> he's about 35 years old. Now my, I, I mean, I, I'm sales, that, that was me. So it was four of us in this little call center and the guy had just started the call center and I'm pretty animated. And the trainer, his name was Tim and he was a nice guy and he was trained, but he was, I was going to sleep and uh, he was training. I was going to sleep. You good information, but it was just a little boring. And, and everything he was saying was true and good. And I would ask, could I add a little bit to that? And he'd say, yeah. So finally the owner came in about three or four days in. And I asked the owner, I said, um, do you have a, a plan laid out, you know, a training program of some kind for the people that you're hiring? Cause it was only four. And he says, no, not yet. I said, well, uh, uh, I could help you with that. <laughs> we talk about progress. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, they hired me and I was making $31,000 a year. That's $600 a week, 40 hours a week when I was used to making $1,000 a day if I saw a client and wrote him. Okay. So God said, no, you, you, you coming down. So I did. And uh, <laughs> I, the Lord long story short, in progressing here, I became their trainer and in less than two years built the call center from four to 102 uh, representatives. And so on the way, we're talking about progress, in the morning. <laughs> we would go walking. We would go walking. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We was getting my exercise on. We would get on. And what else did we do? We would walk. We would pray and walk. We would pray, pray and walk. Walk and pray. We would walk and, and cry. <laughs> and cry. We would walk and pray. And I would yeah. pour into her and she'd share with me so many things. And I'd pour into her and yeah. allow her to pour into me. It was a good thing. It was a good yes. thing. Yes, yes. A lot of things happened since then. Because I think, let's see, remember, Britt had Britt got pregnant, had Josh. Yeah. Josh was in the hospital, brain bleeds. And like all these things were happening. And we, yeah. we didn't really realize at the time, of course, that it was progress we were growing we yeah. were changing Sharp yeah. iron was sharpening iron absolutely absolutely and then we separated for about I don't know a couple of years or so and then uh you end up on Apollo was it Apollo or Arapaho or somewhere over there um Apollo yes Apollo yeah ended up on Apollo and reconnected again and then I get to meet SDB in the flesh <laughs> I had been for him for two years <laughs> So anyway, I met her husband and, and uh, he just took me in. I was mama. Okay. Queen mother. So <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, that's when he, he, he loved to cook y'all. He can get out. Yes, he does. <laughs> and he would cook. Remember, and Wednesday night know. Bible study, you know, people will say, Hey, Jet, can you get Warren to make the peach cobbler for us? <laughs> right. And he will make the peach cobbler and I'll bring peach cobbler to Bible study on Wednesday nights. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, and so then a lot of other things happened. And in 2014, now we're talking about 2006 to 2014. Wow. 2014, mm -hmm. I was living on the Haverwood and my son had an accident that resulted in a traumatic brain injury, which led me to, I had already taken off from work because I was back in uh, doing a self-employment contract at that time where I would leave on when I leave on Monday, on Mondays and come mm -hmm. back on Thursdays, I would work in the country. Yes. Uh, talk about racism. It existed. People were having Ku Klux Klan meetings on the fourth Sunday of every month out there. Mm -hmm. And it literally blew my mind. But mm -hmm. I mean, I had, I had some of them. I had a little girl. I remember in particular, uh, went up to a home. Now I'm the only little spot on the team, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was another girl. She was Hispanic and she and I were like this. She was my best friend. She became my best friend. And uh, this little girl came, to, I knocked on the door and nobody came to the door. And the little girl comes to the back, the side of the door. And she said, mama, 
She said, mommy, there's a nigger out there on the porch. Wow. <laughs> we talked about 2014, y'all. Wow. <laughs> and yep. let, me about, let me tell you about Jesus. My flesh side wanted to snatch her up. <laughs> I knew that she had only repeated oh. what oh. she learned. Yes. We're talking about progress here. Yes. And uh, I looked at the child and I said, Lord, have mercy. This is oh. what they're instilling in their child. Mm -hmm. And I walked away and went and got in my car and I've had several incidents like that out, out there. People would look out and say, there's a nigger. <laughs> but Lord have mercy. I thank you for your love, for yes. your mercy and your compassion on me. Mm -hmm. And Amen. I was able to pity them, to pray for them. Yes. And yeah. We're talking about progress, right? So mm -hmm. in 2014, my son had an accident. And this child, this young lady called me up and she said, Queen Mother, you remember that, Jen? <laughs> Queen Mother, what are you doing? What, what, what's going on? She would help me with Mike. Didn't you help me with Mike a little bit? Um, we came, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little we came bit. to the hospital yeah. and stuff, yes. Yeah. And she says, you, you got so much on you. You need to just pack up your stuff and come out here and live with us. I said, oh, baby, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I did. What did you tell me, Jen? Tell it good folks. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember. Oh my gosh. Told something I, I told you. You, you need told to your pride in your Oh, that's right. Don't put your pride down. Don't block somebody else's <laughs> blessing. Yeah, that's what she told me. Same thing I told her like seven <laughs> years before. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I put it said, down, put it down. <laughs> yeah, put it down. So I did and packed up my stuff. I said, well, I'm going to stay six months. How long I stay? Two years. <laughs> Yes. It did not even seem like you had been yeah, that long. No, they wouldn't let me go, y'all. Oh <laughs> I mean, well, goodness, you was making us fruit baskets and <laughs> smoothies every morning. I had to think about what I was going to eat, you know? Like, come on. <laughs> you you were barely there. It's like, you, you didn't progress. even know you were there half the time, you know? Yeah. yeah. Quiet as a mouse. Absolutely, absolutely. Except right. for movie night. It's tough for movie night. Yeah, movie night, movie night. Progress, progress. <laughs> yes, yes, but I think that um, in looking at all of that, I said, Lord, I said, you allowed them, you allowed them to be a blessing for me. And when I got there, it ended up that I needed to be there for you during your season, um, you know, with Kia, with, you know, everything else. And so I looked at that as, as being an instrument Mm -hmm. in the hands of God yeah. so that I can be an influence used right. by God. Yeah. So that, that's why I looked at that as, and I'm thankful. And so that's how we grew so close. That's how we grew so close. You stuck with me. <laughs> I'm here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. How's mom? How's mom? My mom is good. You know, we're moving her from Shreveport to, from rest in the Shreveport. Awesome. So that is definitely a blessing because, you know, that was one of our concerns is her getting older and living so far from everybody. But, you know, she's really good and just, you know, just living life, you know, um, I've seen a lot of, of well, I'm thankful because over the years growing up, my mom and I were not really, really close. Right. Um, I never doubted her love. She's always loved me. Sure. But, you know, as a, as a girl, I grew up without my father there and my mom was there. And my grandmother basically raised us because my mom was working hard. And I just, I was just being a teenage girl. I didn't really want any parts of her. And so I, you know, later on in my life, I realized I think I had some resentment for some things or whatever. And so we just weren't close. We would bump heads a lot, long sure. story short. And I just really been praying about that. And I, I always tell people, you know, I have, I have a collection of mothers. I have the mother that birthed me, my, my mother-in-law, I have you, you know, these women that are poured into my lives at certain periods of time. And through that, that helped me realize that my relationship with my mom wasn't really what I desired it to be. Right. And so, um, you know, I had to get to a point where I just realized, you know what, my mama loved me. She did the best she could. Let me forgive her for things that I'm holding her accountable for right. that she don't even know that I'm that I'm upset about. Yeah. And let me give her the chance to um, have that relationship that I feel like we both deserve. And right. so through that, I feel like we are closer now. We talk more, you know, we can be in the same room together and I not want to pull my hair out, you know, just because you know how it is being a teenager. You, you, you want to just go against everything your parents tell you. And even though they're doing their best and they're trying their best and they're trying to be everything that you need, you yeah. don't really want that at that time. So it took me to become an, a grown woman and yes. then build relationships with other strong women to help me realize 
get get you know put it down forget right right, right right and remember i always told you that she couldn't give what she didn't have right she couldn't give you what she didn't have she couldn't tell you what she didn't know she right. could be for you what she wasn't exactly so yeah, yeah so very good very good very good and how is that good that is good well <laughs> Tell the truth, so, the devil. Well, so you know, with, you know, with me, when you speak about father or dad, because you know, I look at my husband's dad as my dad because that's the that. only dad that I've truly known. Um, mm -hmm. He's been in my life since I was 15 years old. My biological father, on the other hand, um, has not always been there, and so we don't have a relationship. To my knowledge, he's doing okay. I don't really know because we don't talk. And for a long time, I had, I struggled, you know, um, with my relationship with him as well, right. but I finally had to, <laughs> so I remember I was getting ready to go through something. Um, and I was talking to Bernadette, you know, Bernadette's my BFF. And so her and I were talking and I don't know what I did. I did or said something to her and she said, you walking in unforgiveness. And I said, no, I'm not. What are you talking about? I was kind of offended when she said it. Uh -huh. Because I love her. I knew that what she was saying had to be true. I just listened. She said, Jet, you're, you're walking in unforgiveness. She said, I can tell shit because when you talk about this certain situation and, and you bring him up, I hear the hurt and the unforgiveness in, your, in you. And I was like, so I went ahead and got off the phone with her. And when I got off the phone, I really started to think about it and allow myself yeah. to um, process it and process what she had told me. And I prayed and the Lord revealed to me, yeah, you are walking in unforgiveness. And so right. I um, just asked the Lord to forgive me. And I remember writing him this long text message and letting him know that I, I was upset because he, I couldn't trust him with my heart. Sure. So long story short, I was able to forgive him and move on. Now we still don't have a relationship, but I'm not angry with him anymore. Right, right. You've released the blame. Yeah. Yes. You don't blame yes. him anymore. And that's what I find, um, Jet, you know that, since I've been, you know, sharing with women and pouring into them, I find that more and more I'm able to hear the unforgiveness that they have in their heart. I actually hear it. Yeah. Oh, yes. And, and what people don't realize is a lot of people, you hear, you hear people say, um, oh, you know, time will heal. No. Oh, well, you know, you're not going to, you, you, you're going to eventually, when you forgive a person, you'll forget. That's not correct. No. You'll no. never forget it. The pain mm -hmm. is still there. It's real. Mm -hmm. You just, sometimes it's as fresh as the day it happens. Sometimes it's as fresh as the day it's happened. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Forgiveness is a transaction is what people don't realize. It's the <laughs> process to getting to that transaction that we need help with. Mm -hmm. And you know what else yeah. is this? It's, it's a conscious decision. Because of course, you know, my husband, you know, Warren and I were separated for eight years and God brought us back together. And the one thing, he, he truly helped me understand forgiveness too. Mm -hmm. um, it's because he took me to the lake right before we were going to get remarried. I want to say like two nights before. I was going to stay in one place. He was staying someplace else. So we weren't going to see each other. And he took me to that lake and he said, listen, we've been, sep we've been separated and apart for eight years. He said, I, what I want to tell you right now is whatever you need to say, say it. Get it off your chest. Let's talk about it. Ask me whatever it is you need to ask me about. He said, because once we leave here tonight, we are moving forward. This relationship is not what we had. It's what we're going to have. And we're moving forward in Christ. He says, so we're not living in the past. He said, I don't care what you did before, you know, while we weren't together. I forgive you. Do you forgive me? Yes, I forgive you. When and that's what we're walking in. And we have, and I can honestly tell you that we have made a conscious choice and we have not looked back. That's yeah, you know, it's so forgiveness is possible. Yeah. Yes, just like Jesus did. Mm -hmm. But it's the process to getting there, and then it's after. Yeah, yeah, and people don't understand that. And so God has oh. actually led me to launch my coaching business since I've been awesome. doing it all my days anyway. Right? <laughs> you do it on a daily basis. I yeah. do it on my days anyway. Right. So yeah, I've, it's my target audience though is Christian women that are struggling with unforgiveness because a mm -hmm. lot of times we're working in the church, taking care of the husband, taking care of the wife, taking care, uh, uh, um, taking care of the community, the church, yes. doing all those things, taking care of the children, and, and unfortunately, that. unfortunately in our community, it is not okay not to be okay. It is and not that's okay. a problem. Be okay. That is a problem. That we is need to be allowed to be vulnerable and we need to be allowed to not be okay sometimes. That's right. That's right. 
and, and, and in our community and more. <laughs> yeah, yes. that, that's exactly correct. So yeah, I'm getting a good, getting good response. After I wrote the book, I had been getting so many responses, positive responses that mm -hmm. people were reading my story and they were like, you're telling my story. So I'm like, oh, oh wow, God. you know? And so I said, the Lord led me to launch the coaching business. So I'm working on a few things. So keep me lifted up in prayer. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm ready to help God's daughters to yeah. see what I saw and to go where I went and to be where I am. So, yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and you know, it's freedom. It's freedom. Helps <laughs> you to live a full, a more fulfilled life. Yeah. You know, because you, you become you. ill from unforgiveness. Yes. I mean, you're being foul, you know, nasty attitude. You're reacting instead of responding. Yes. You know, you, you're hoping for vengeance and you're getting frustrated because you hear somebody's voice and yes. all those things. And, and the blessing, I'm yeah. oh, sorry. The Go blessing ahead. in that is this. One thing I've learned and I love about you is this, is that you are transparent. Yeah. And the fact that that allowed me and taught me that I can be transparent. And so being able to let that guard down and let people truly see and hear what you've gone through, because it's one thing to have somebody trying to get coach you or teach you or help you get through something. And they act like they've never been through anything. Absolutely. You don't, you don't, um, that's not progress. That's not helping them. But when you get that person that's standing in front of you and they've let their walls down and they let you see they're vulnerable and yep. they are no holes barred and tell you the truth. And yes. then you see how God brought them through that's working it out. That's true progress. Yeah. And that helps them get from that place of unforgiveness and deep hurt to be able to heal Absolutely. and allow God to heal. Absolutely. And a lot of times, most Christian women, they know what God says about forgiveness. They know, we know mm -hmm. you're supposed to forgive your brother, your sister, your mother. You're supposed to. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to do it. I'm just, what really do you, what, what do you always say? People say that knowledge is power. But what but is power? Applied. applied knowledge is power. Absolutely. You can have the information. Absolutely. You can have it. But if you're not putting it, if you're not, you're not putting, putting it, it to practice, applying it to your life, then it's doing exactly. you no good. So sometimes exactly. you need somebody to hold that up in front of your face and say, okay, mm -hmm. you know what God says? Okay, let me help you walk through this. Yes. Let me help you do this. Let me let and me pull your coattail. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Help you to be look look into yourself and be real with you. Yes. Do you really want to be obedient to God? Do you really want to be a disciple? Mm -hmm. or you're just fooling yourself. What right. else? Tell me about it, you know. So <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited about it. I'm excited I'm for you. Responses, yay. You know, moving from career to calling. Everybody's asking me, well, are you gonna still do finance? Yeah, I am. If you career need to calling, me. I like that. <laughs> if yes. you need me, but uh, you know, other than that, I want to serve the people of God, the women of God, Christian women. I heard um, I heard um Somebody say you have to maximize your message. Maximize your message to monetize the ministry. And in the sense of you maximize the message and you're getting the message out, but ministries have to, let's just be real. Ministries have to have money. Absolutely. And so that money goes to help other people. You know, a ministry, like who can you help if you, somebody's hungry and you can't feed them? Absolutely. You no. Know? So, and you have to be willing to invest in yourself. It's simple as that. Exactly. You know, you know how much money I have spent to get to the place yes. that I am. You oh, know, yes. You, you know this better than anybody else. Anybody. I mean, mm -hmm. I have bought countless amount of programs and counseling and therapies and all this kind of stuff. And because I want to invest in me, I want to be a yes. better me, the best version of myself to give glory and honor to God. That's who I want to be. Right. And, and right. I can only be that through community and through transparency. Mm -hmm. The scripture says people are won by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, but they don't know my testimony unless I tell them. That's right. They don't know unless I tell them. So yeah. I, I want to tell them. I want to tell them that everybody got something going on and there's no temptation such as common to man, but God mm. is faithful. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. Well, with that said, you think we ought to leave the good folks? Sure. <laughs> She don't want to leave hey, them. Did you did you say leave them or leave them? Leave, leave, leave. You know, oh. like another draw. Well, you know, the funny thing is, like, we can do this all day. This is like you know, me and you just sitting having a conversation. We used to do this all night long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wake mm -hmm. up in the morning. Come on, baby. Let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> the morning. Yes. Yes. Hey, man. Um, well, I'm going to say to you guys, this is DTM Real Talk. 
And um, there is a lot of excitement coming along with my new coaching business from uh, bondage to freedom, overcoming forgiveness. And if you want more information about it, I'll leave the link after this clip. And this is DTM Real Talk. And we're just doing what? Keeping it real. Keeping it real. We'll see you next week. DTM Real Talk. Be sure to join us for more conversation. And oh yeah, don't forget to hit that like button, share and subscribe while you're there.